Don't try this at home. Well, I don't think that's, that doesn't look correct. <laughs> so bad. So today we have a challenge. Our wonderful sponsor, Micro Center, have given us the brand new AMD Radeon RX 6700 XT early, which means that we have less than 24 hours to build a cool gaming PC, test it, and post this video. Should be easy, right? I want this to look cool. That is a lot of people. <laughs> Dude, they're actually 35 bucks. It's actually a really good deal. Did you do measurements? Oh, absolutely not. Okay. Not even a little bit. How ambitious do you want to get? I mean, this video needs to go live tomorrow. Oh, wait, no. Oh, I just realized. What if we get a power supply with RGB? <laughs> Wait, this, does this have RGB? Wait, this doesn't have RGB, does it? No. Oh. You just assumed. I did, I saw, R look, I see ROG, I immediately assume RGB. I mean, the Kratos actually looks to be pretty cool, right? It better look this cool, okay? Well, they've got the white and the black Vengeance Pro, so we are going with a white motherboard. So we could rock that white Vengeance Pro. Our goal today is simple. We need to build an entire gaming PC around this the Red Devil Power Color Radeon RX 6700 XT. Now this thing aims to be a competitor to something like an RTX 3070, which means that while, yes, in theory, we should build a very simple, straightforward system. Instead, we're doing this. Inside this box is a system that came out 20 years ago. You gotta lift with your back. Don't lift with your knees, lift with your back. One, two, three. So this, is a computer that I actually used to own. In fact, I did a video on this system back in like 2010. We're going to be taking it apart and we're using this chassis so that we have a sleeper on the outside complete with our Windows XP and Pentium 4. But on the inside, we're gonna have an absolute overkill game PC for 2021. Now this system was purchased off of eBay for parts. So even though it's in pretty good shape, it is missing, I think, a hard drive and some other components. So don't worry, we're not ruining a, an ancient piece of art. Oh, look at this. We've got the original specs of the system. Pentium 4 processor, half a gigabyte of RAM, an 80 gig hard drive. Woo! Oh, wow, that's so clean. Oh no, we, we can't screw this up. This is, this is actually really nice. Look how like clean everything is. This was supposed to be not working, but I can see it's just it's just missing a hard drive. Now one of the cool things about this chassis was if you actually press this bottom bit, it was a little spindle for like your CDs. For the aesthetic, I really want this to look as sort of authentic on the outside as possible. I don't want anyone to realize that we have a modern gaming PC. The biggest problem is gonna be where are we gonna put cables? If you look around front, we've got our DVD, our CD and everything. I don't wanna to have to remove those, but we're not gonna have space for cables if we keep the full drives in. We could probably take these drives out and just keep the front plates. I'm really regretting the lack of time we have to work on this. Okay, we just gotta start taking it apart. All right, so we've gotten pretty much everything out short of the optical drives, and we've got a good amount of space in here. So my first test before we even move on can I fit our MATX board inside? Look at that, perfect. It's funny how so many things have evolved and changed and yet so many things are the exact same. Okay, that is very good news. When was the last time you saw a graphics card that didn't even need a heat sink? Wonder, can you think I could Ethereum mine on this? One of the main problems is gonna be cable management. You cannot run cables in the back, right? I mean, this is, this is it, we can't hide anything. Like, all of our cables are gonna come from the power supply. They're gonna need to go somewhere and be routed down. We're gonna have to take out those optical drives, right? Because the idea here really is, from the outside, total sleeper. From the inside, as soon as you pop that side panel off, it's RGB town. Basically what we really want, we just want this front piece to go on the front of the chassis, but then we can keep all the rest of the space for our cable management. Yeah, the main problem is that this is all still plastic in the front, so I don't want to tear anything out. Meanwhile, I've got myself the Ryzen 5 5600X installed, which is really nice to see fifth gen Ryzen starting to actually be regularly in stock. We also have our 16 gigs of Corsair Vengeance RGB, which looks so sick in the white. And underneath here, we have our two terabyte 970 Samsung Evo drive. Okay, so progress has been made. First of all, the front of the chassis looks the same, However, if you come around back, you'll see that the drives are now completely missing. So Ken did a great job of gluing that stuff back in place and tearing apart this old CD and DVD drive. On my side, I've gotten the board all set. So not only do we have our X570 board, but we also have our memory, we have our SSD, and I installed our 212 with a pair of the Corsair LL120s. 
a little bit overkill, but we have to keep in mind, these two are the not only the CPU fans, but also the main case fans in the system. We do have that little 80 mil fan, which I do think will fit in the back of the chassis, but like, yeah, there's not gonna be a lot of, um, how should we put it, airflow. You know what Red Devil cards are known for? Their performance. You know what they're not known for? Being small. Should've thought about this before. <laughs> <laughs> Not even close. I think that we can take these the, these drive cages out. I actually think that might be okay. Oh, look at that. Am I tripping or are there no standoffs on this? I don't think these are grounded though. It seemed like a bad idea to not use standoffs. Remember when I got all excited about finding RGB on the power supply? You know what I forgot to look for? It's modular. It looks really cool from this side, right? Don't mind the fact that we now have to find a way of cable managing all of this in the side. Wow, that's not even close. Don't try this at home. Always use all the screws on your power supply. Sometimes when we're recording a video, I get this little like sneaking suspicion that there's like some really goofy music playing right now. And this is the beginning of the fail montage. So um, if you come around to the back of our system, you'll see that there's a, a little bit of a gap here on the bottom of the supply. That's known as extra cooling. This was all part of my plan. <laughs> so bad. My main worry, is first of all, will it look decent? Cause why do we go through all this hassle if it looks like garbage? And second of all, are we going to overheat the system? There's not a lot of airflow in this case, right? Even with a couple of extra fans on the CPU cooler, I mean, there's just not a lot of airflow here. We're gonna need all the help we can get on this system. Cause you know something else I'm realizing? There's no intake anywhere. How do I get enough airflow for my entire system through this narrow little series of slots? I went from being all confident, like, oh, this is not so bad, to like, there's no cooling in this system. I think we gotta go for it, though. Okay, so as I've been installing the motherboard, a new problem has arisen. So if you take a look at our 212, which should fit in the vast majority of cases, and you, you come down to, to ground level, uh, I think these little caps are barely gonna keep us from putting the side panel on. <gasps> it works! Wait, does it fit? How does that fit? Wait, uh, it actually doesn't fit super well, but, oh, woo. Man, this is gonna be, for an old chassis, absolutely packed with hardware. Woo, <laughs> that is so obnoxiously full of PC hardware. It actually looks really nice though. It's almost like we planned it and I didn't buy this chassis off of eBay and then we YOLO'd it today with zero backup plan whatsoever. We clearly, thought this one through. Now comes the fun part of trying to make it not look like Wally vomited inside. So I'm trying to wire the power button that came with the case originally to the board and I am not doing exactly the greatest job. I would probably even argue that this is somewhat of a fire hazard. Maybe <laughs> I don't, probably not. It should be okay. All right, so Austin has plugged in the power supply and Sad boys. Uh, yeah, you know, it would be helpful if I actually flipped the Okay, hold on. on. Wait, 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 wait. No, 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 no. <laughs> Well, I don't think that's, that doesn't look correct. I think your, your cables might be touching there. <laughs> the thing is, you guys, we've got like two hours left to get this thing with Windows installed and to game and benchmark. I know, but I'm stubborn and I want to okay. get this. That's okay. fine, I am too. Oh, hi, I didn't see you there. I was just browsing our fine sponsor, Micro Center's website, but they just happen to have a great promo going on right now. We can get a free, not only 32 gig micro SD card, but also flash drive. Look how simple it is. Put your email address in, show up in store. It's an in-store free coupon. I mean, <laughs> it's hard to beat a deal like free. Sorry, I was just distracted by their very fine and wonderful offer from our kind sponsors at Micro Center. I get distracted easily, it's fine. Behind me, you will see a 100% stock and unmodified compact Presario from the year 2001. See, it's got Nvidia graphics, that's a lie. It's got a Intel Pentium 4 processor and Windows XP, also lies. But if you come around to the side, you'll see that there's a little bit of a secret lurking inside. Not only do you have a little bit of a red glow on the bottom, but especially if you come around to the back, it looks straight evil. Like, that does not look good. It looks like it's on fire, which I can assure you it is not on fire yet. Now, have Ken and I been building it for seven straight hours today? Yes, yes we have. Did we require a BIOS update at the last second, even though I've used a fifth gen Ryzen processor in this board before? Why, yes, yes we did. Do we have to take the whole thing apart and spend an hour troubleshooting? Uh-huh, but guess what? It all works. What we did was we made it as clean as possible while still delivering that sweet 2001 aesthetic. 
So behold, my friends, our handiwork. Now, yes, yes, yes. Everyone's screaming, oh, look at the cables. Ah, oh, it's disgusting. But keep in mind that a mere handful of hours ago, this was a mostly functional Windows XP system. And we have swapped out pretty much every single component. Now, this is the very first time that we've actually been able to try this card as it comes out in less than 12 hours from now. So while, yes, you can go watch your J's Two Cents or your Linus Tech Tips for all the hardcore benchmarking that's probably already been live, the main thing we're gonna do today is see how well it works inside an incredibly thermally limited chassis. But if you come close, what you'll be able to tell is that even though there's next to no airflow inside this chassis, it's actually not that loud. So yes, the graphics card isn't really doing anything yet, so as soon as we actually start stressing it. But like, I'm actually pretty happy with this. And importantly, the power button works. With the original old boy, it was good, but there were certainly some telltale signs that it wasn't quite legit. But not only was this an iconic PC, I mean, they sold so many of these. But on top of that, we've got all the original stickers, it's in such good shape, but on the inside, I mean, this is a legitimate gaming PC. So first off, we have a quick 3D Mark Time Spy benchmark. While you should certainly not build a system in a chassis like this with very, very little cooling, these parts are actually really energy efficient. You look at that Ryzen 5 5600X, that is a fairly low wattage CPU with still a lot of performance, which is part of the reason why we're actually able to run this, and I've got nothing as an intake besides this little grill on the bottom and my power supply, which I can crank up to max fan, and that is my exhaust. So, and the result is 10,918. We're certainly down a little bit on the 3070, but, but considering that we're using a Ryzen 5 and not like a higher end processor, we're certainly losing some of that on the CPU score. All right, let's see how it actually performs in a real game of Black Ops. So we do have the ability to run this game with ray tracing enabled. Now, just like all of the other AMD cards of this generation of the 6000 series, the ray tracing performance isn't amazing. The nice thing about this card, it does have the full 12 gigs of VRAM. Yeah, so with ray tracing enabled, this game looks great, but we are diving down to about 60 FPS, and that's at 1080p. I mean, not to say that 60 FPS is bad, but I guarantee if we turn off ray tracing, we will hop up quite a bit. I gotta say though, you know, this is actually a good benchmark for the card, because look at that, we're seeing it over nine gigabytes of VRAM used. I am really happy with how this build came out. But of course, if you enjoyed, make sure to subscribe to the channel and ring -a -ling that ding -a ling bell. Check out our fine sponsor, Micro Center, at the link in the description. And if you've built a gaming PC recently, you can submit your build on the Micro Center Build Showcase with hashtag Micro Center Madness to be entered to win one of two Micro Center prize packs. The submissions will run through March 26th, and the following week, a bracketed community vote will begin, narrowing it down to the grand prize winner. Until the next time I get an idea to build a compact Presario from 2001, we'll see you then.